Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life and I'm coming to you today from someplace a little bit different. It's a place I haven't been in a really long time. It's called a sit spot and I used to actually have one way over there in the yard, um, but that tree fell down and so I got out of the habit of going to a sit spot. What's a sit spot, you might ask? It's something that I learned about in my training as a naturalist and it's really just a place in your yard where you go out and sit and you stop and you give thanks as you think about each element of nature. So when I did the school I taught, um, you've heard me talk about the words before, all else before. And so I'd come out and I'd think, I'd start like um, with dirt and leaf litter and thank God for all those critters that live down there. And I'd work my way up to the sky and the angels and God. And it was a beautiful thing. Um, and you can do it that way or you could do it where you say like the canticle, the creatures, and again, work your way through, reflecting on how each of those different elements of nature reveals God to you. Like right now, there's this gentle breeze. Can you see this gentle breeze moving these guys back here? Um, and as that breeze is blowing, I'm, I'm reminded of the Spirit of God blowing through our lives. And that's part of why I'm out here today. Um, I've learned throughout this, this very vlog, thank you all of you for helping me learn. Um, while I say I am in the secular Franciscan order, Others may disagree. It turns out there are a variety, not just of third order Franciscans, but of third order Franciscans who say that they are the third order created by Francis. Um, and that may or may not be what they say. Um, nobody really gets into like an arguing match over who's the favorite, the true son. I've not heard anybody say that literally at all. But it's so amazing to me. Um, if you know my history at all, you'll know I am from an incredibly blended family. Um, some days were better blended than others, but there's there's quite a number of us, and what a blessing we each bring something unique to the family. And so I am thankful to find out about all the varieties of my third order brothers and sisters who are secular Franciscans. And, and that word can be a sticking point for people. Um, some people say secular means that you're of the world and some people say that means that you're in the world. So the secular Franciscan order that's following the Pauline rule of 1978, we say that we live in the world and that's the point. We're living out the Franciscan charism out in the community, out in the real world. We're not living um, together in isolation. We're not living in hermitage, although other people do that. That's the way they live out their Franciscan charism. So as people have been putting comments, you know, on, on my different vlogs, and I've learned about the many different third order groups, many of which are actually uh, secular, as in non-religious, not a brother or sister, not, not a... <laughs> It's very confusing because I say that we're brothers and sisters. They are not a religious sister or nun, or they are not a brother or um, a religious brother or a priest. They are living in the world. They may be single. They may be married. Uh, they may have kids. They may not have kids. There's many different varieties. And some of them do live in small communities. Um, some of them, I've learned, like my own order has fraternities fraternity life is very big for us that we live in fraternity in a way that we have at least at least a monthly gathering um and zoom's made <laughs> zoom has made that nice right now during the pandemic so at least um some people who normally can't physically come to the gatherings are able to right now and that's been a blessing but others some of the other groups that are secular just bear with me with that word. I'm not trying to offend others. Um, they don't meet in fraternity on a regular basis. And this pandemic has actually allowed them to do that because most of them live uh, further apart than, than we might. And their rule allows them to not have, they're not required to go to a fraternity meeting every month. But because of the pandemic, they've actually been connecting with each other on Zoom. So that's kind of an exciting thing right there. So as I'm talking, you hear me saying about different rules and habits. And if you are a planner and you have no idea what I'm talking about with the secular Franciscans, don't worry, I'll put the links in the comments below and you can see what that is. But it all ties in because I've reached out to some of my brothers and sisters, like I said, who have put their comments below. And most of them have said, sorry, I'm holding this in my lap outside. Most of them have said um, that they either left the order, the secular Franciscan order, or and where they found this other group because they found the rule of the secular Franciscan order, the Pauline rule of 1978, wasn't specific enough for them personally. Um, and what does that mean? 
that they needed more rules. They felt that in order to grow in holiness, they needed a little bit more direction than the rule of 1978 was giving. And I guess that's fair enough. Because even among my brothers and sisters and Francis and Claire who follow the rule of 1978, I have seen us do many things. Like we don't wear a habit, we wear uh, our towel. You might've seen it with my three knotted cord with my, my towel symbol on it. This is our habit. And some groups like to wear an actual habit, you know, the big woolen brown garment. Um, although they're not all brown, but currently I think all the third orders are wearing brown. Um, you know, big hooded garment, which is technically still a towel. If you hold your arms straight out, the sleeves make the, the crossbars of the T. Um, and some of them wear a more of a uniform habit. So like you can only wear grays or brown plain clothes or blue for the Virgin Mary. Nothing with flowers or sequins or anything crazy like that. Um, so we all kind of have our own habits. But even among those who wear this kind of habit, I've seen them adding to their habit. They may buy clothing that has like an embroidered towel, you know, like here on the pocket. Or they may end up getting a sweatshirt or a hoodie. I know a lot of people get bathrobes that are prayer robes. They're like made of fleece or something. And, um, and in fact, a secular, in the secular Franciscan order, you're allowed to be buried in one of those habits. Uh, not the fleece ones. The oh. <laughs> So you can still be buried in a habit. And even, you know, John Bradburn, servant of God, John Bradburn, that was his one wish. He was a secular Franciscan and he really wanted to wear a Franciscan habit. And he was given dispensation from a friar to actually wear one. So what's better? What should I do? And here's the thing. I love being following the current Pauline rule. All the rules of the secular Franciscans were given to them by popes. And so it seems kind of wrong to me, to me, um, not to follow the role that the last Pope made, right? Because Popes make them. I'm going with the one that was last made by a Pope. That's where I'm going. That makes sense to me. That's where the Holy Spirit has led me. That's the, the group I was called to. Um, and that group is very much my family. But so what about the others? Now, here's the thing. A lot of them go back to either the Leonine rule. Remember, we've talked about that. Pope Leo really thought it was the way to re rejuvenate the, the whole church. And he instituted all these beautiful prayers and devotions that secular Franciscans were supposed to do. And he thought everyone was going to jump in. And they didn't. But that's another story. And the rule before that had a lot of prescriptions on how to live your daily life. And so sometimes, if I find some vagaries in the rule of 1978 or statutes and constitutions, you know, um, and, and my prayer life is lacking. I will go look at the Leo nine rule and see what's valuable there, what tips I can use and draw from that rule and maybe incorporate that into my daily life, make that become a habit. Now, if I'm feeling like I'm getting too many clothes or material possessions, that's when I go back to the rule of 1221. And I'll mine that rule for the treasures in it and guidance there. So what a treasure house of rules we have, friends. We have ones that really help us uh, to modify our way of living, ones that help us modify our prayer life, and the third one really helps us modify how we live and interact with the world itself. What a treasure house. What great great treasures our Franciscan family has. And thank God for these blessed popes who have given them to us. And so I'm looking at these habits and I'm just so encouraged. But again, you're like, what does that have to do with planning for the new year? Well, one of the things my extended family has me do is write out a fairly detailed Christmas list. And my husband teases me because you can tell every year I'm into some slightly new thing, right? And so my thought was, I'm going to go back. I'm going to look at all those Christmas lists and see what happened to those things I was so into. Because you're either going to do one of two things, right? You're going to incorporate it in your life or you're going to get rid of it. And so those cool new things that I had to have before, did I incorporate it in my life? If yes, I'm going to look at my mission and goals from last year and see if those things I incorporated into my life helped me reach those missions and goals or did they hinder me? And so I'm going to decide whether to continue them or not based on that. Now the things I shed, I'm going to look back at and I'm going to evaluate why did I shed them? Did I shed them because they were junk or did I shed them because they were maybe a little bit challenging for me or just not for me at all? And so if it was something that was not for me or was junk, I'm not going to pay any attention to it. But if it was something that was challenging for me back then, 
hey, maybe it's not now. Maybe the Holy Spirit has given me some new gift or a new person in my life or a new circumstance like the pandemic where I'm home all the time. And maybe those things, maybe that should come back. Like this sit spot, this old great habit of sitting outside in nature. Um, what's making this possible is actually my dog's outdoor dog bed. That's what I'm sitting on. That's why I'm not freezing out here <laughs> at the end of December. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to go back and look at those habits. Now, if you don't keep detailed Christmas lists on your computer, okay, fine, not everybody does. Are you a person who's on social media? If you're watching this on YouTube, you probably are. Go back and look at some of your old social media posts. See what you were into last year and the year before. See if they helped you grow towards Christ and with your brothers and sisters or if they hindered you. Evaluate them just like I said the Christmas list. And that's going to give us a great basis for making our New Year's goals. And I'm so excited. So what are your treasuries of rules and what habits are you going to pull out of them? God bless, friends. Bye.